What's up guys, Dr. Feel Good here, back again with another video prescription. And I just have one damn question. Why does the typical gamer of today accept the unacceptable? And let me clarify what I mean. Today, we get broken games, incomplete games, day one DLC, pre-launch DLC, season passes, day one patches, microtransactions, retailer specific DLC. To me, all those things, in one way or another, are completely unacceptable. Unacceptable. Now, here's another question I have before I continue. Does something have to be acceptable or accepted just because it is common and expected? Just because almost every game today has DLC, does that mean that DLC should be acceptable? Not really. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think all DLC is bad. I've seen many examples of DLC done right. Just because most games today come out broken, buggy, or incomplete at launch, does that mean you have to accept it? Hell to the no. You people don't realize you are primarily responsible for the bullshit that gamers as a whole are enduring. See, people like myself, like Liger of Enduo, Red Knight of Active Gamer Life, Terminator Juice of The Juice is Loose, Miz T of the Miz T Show, Jay Fleming of Gamers at Large, The Game Idea Guy of the Game Idea Foundry, and most recently his Pitch for Switch series, and many others that I can't think of right now. We don't just accept everything that these developers and publishers release. I know people that are big fans of Batman and they love the Arkham games, but they did not buy Arkham Origins because it was broken, especially on the PC. They did not purchase Arkham Knight because they did not agree with a $40 season pass. You see, I understand that some of you, if not many of you, are fans of particular franchises, IPs, and or games. I totally get that. I totally get it. I love Splatoon. I have over 700 hours in that game. I love it. But if Nintendo was released Splatoon 2 with less content than the first, and then they said we have a DLC that costs 40 bucks, guess what? I'm not buying. Not even a game. Because as much as I love that game, to me, that was a blatant action that you just don't give a shit. So, once again, my question is, why are you gamers accepting the unacceptable? Recently, there was news about Dishonored 2 being broken across the board, but most notably on the PC front. 
PC Master Race, right? Not trolling you guys, but understand. Doesn't matter how powerful your rig is. If developers don't give a shit about your particular platform or the game itself, it can be just as broken, if not more broken, than a console version. But that's another topic for another day. However, there are people out there that probably, after they heard this, they're probably going to still run out and buy the game because they are fans of the franchise. Guys, that does not make sense. You should not willingly buy a product in which you know is broken or faulty to some extent. Would you buy a Ferrari if Ferrari told you, yeah, the fuel line is leaking, but yeah, the car still costs $500,000. Would you buy a Bugatti Veyron if it was missing two tires? Probably not. Would you buy a home if it had no toilets? Probably not. Now you may think these are extreme examples, but they serve the same purpose, has the same meaning. The meaning should be very clear. I just like Liger of Induo says, there are no perfect games out there. Every game has a bug or two. Every game, no game is perfect. But let me tell you something. Assassin's Creed Unity was so far from perfect, it should no one should have purchased that game. No one. These were things that were announced before the game released. If people are showing you that faces are not on character models, if people are showing you all the bugs and glitches before the game's launch, why did you still go out there and buy the game? Even if you had already pre-ordered it, you should have canceled that pre-order. Seriously. And let's say you didn't hear anything about this game being buggy at all because you don't care to read gaming media websites. I get that. But if you experienced it, you should have returned that game post haste and even complained about it. Complain to the point where you need to get extra trade in credit or you get a full refund. Because then that would send a message to the retailers, which would in which would then cause them to reach out to the developer and or publisher and say, hey, you know what? We sold our customers a faulty product, which means you sold us a faulty product. This is unacceptable. We want our money back. And guess what? The developers and publishers do have to pay back the retailers for their product. For every version, every unit of the game they send back, they have to pay that money back. This is a way to teach the big publishers and developers a lesson. We should not accept broken games from anybody. And another thing we should not accept are these piss poor anti-consumer DLC practices. If a game is to launch in December and you're telling me in June there's going to be day one DLC, you should have your ass kicked if you still buy this game day one. Just grab the game case and slap yourself with it. You have had someone tell you that there is a season pass and or DLC that will be available day one, months prior to the release of the game. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. So hell no. Uh-uh. I knew The Witcher 3 would probably get, be getting DLC. So I waited and I waited. And guess what? I recently purchased a complete edition on Xbox One for $25. Yeah, it normally goes for 50. I got it for 25. So all the DLC, which the, the DLC for The Witcher 3 is not expensive. It's actually DLC done right in my opinion. But still, I knew it was coming. So I waited. It's that simple. But 
if a company tells you there will be DLC in the game before the game launches, now they tell you this the day after launch that they're coming out with more content, they'll be released in four or five months. That makes sense because that implies that they are currently working on it and or bug testing it and it will be out within half a year or however long they say. Now, if they say the day after launch that we got DLC releasing next month, that shit should be free or you should wait. Even if you like the game and the game is not broken, to me, you should not even purchase a DLC day one. You just shouldn't. Because this is obviously shit they could have put in the game before it launched. They decided to take it out of the game and sell it to you. The reason they're doing this is because they want to sell games for more than $60 a pop. Developers have admitted that they want games to cost $100 or close to it. So that's why you have $60 games that are not really $60 games, but they're coming out with $30 and $40 DLC packages, whether it be in the form of a season pass or content a la carte. This is unacceptable, people, and yet you guys still run out there and get it. I know people that still run out there and buy Call of Duty at launch, knowing that there's either a season pass or a map pack coming, if not multiple. Why? If you wait three to six months, you can get the game for 20 to $30 cheaper than it was at launch. So a $6 game becomes 30 40 bucks. And then at that point, it will be understandable if you purchase the DLC, because at least you got the game at a discount. But to me, any company that announces DLC prior to the game's launch, especially if it's months prior, they're selling you half a game. And they want to sell you uh, for full price. And they want to sell you the other half for either 20, 30 bucks, if not full price. This has to stop, people. It has to stop. All right? Microtransactions. And one of Red Knight's, I think his most recent video he did, he mentioned that, like, I think Gears of War has microtransactions out the ass everywhere and I'm thinking I understand it's a popular third person shooter and it's exclusive to you know to Microsoft um, has a campaign mode but seriously why are there microtransactions and I think this game has a season pass see to me that's going too far I'm sorry, you're not going to make me buy a digital gun or even even more, you know, stupid is buying a digital skin for a digital weapon. Like, come on, people. No one stops to admire your skin on your gun, the decals and shit, while they're shooting at you. And you can say, well, it's for me. It's a digital weapon it has no benefit for you outside that game and even when you're playing you're probably not going to notice it because you have people shooting at you trying to take your life another thing that's unacceptable in my opinion what is up with these day one patches so a game is to release and it's, uh, let's say in December. You've been working on this game for two, three years. Okay. Why is it that on launch day, there is a patch, a mandatory patch, which is larger, in some cases larger, than a full game on the Xbox 360? I'm hearing stories of three, four, five, even with the 10 gigabyte patches. What the hell for? Why is it that this brand new game, which is a finished product, it is gone gold, and it's in the stores. I need more information just to play this damn thing. I need to download more shit. 
so what you're telling me is you didn't even finish the game before you actually put it, it, it gave it to the printing press. You didn't even finish it. You, it, it's like they were burning a CD on a computer. And then once, a, and let's say they had 20 tracks, they burned the 20 tracks on there. But then they didn't let this. They, they didn't let the program actually close off the CD. So once the how many tracks are put on there, they just pop the CD out, and now it's like if you want to play it, you got to download a patch. Or let's say if the patch is to, to correct some things they found before launch, then why not just delay the launch? I'd rather you delay the launch and give me a full game that's been fully bug tested. Then you push this game out, which is already the mandatory install is 40 or 50 gigabytes. And then you need another 5 to 10 gigabytes to patch it. And this is just only the first patch. But, but what's up with the damn patches? I understand patches to make the game more balanced. Like Nintendo has done with Splatoon over the months, over the entire year actually. I understand that. But I need a patch to play my game day one. Anything that's wrong with this game, you could have fixed before launching or worst case scenario, just delay the shit. Yeah, you're going to have mad people that will get mad, but at least they will have a complete game that's not broken, busted, or buggy. And some of these games, despite the patch, are still trash. The Division, anyone? Hell, even some consoles. I'm looking at you, PS4 Pro. That it worked in the beginning. You pushed the patch to the system. I think it was 4.1 or something like that. And then it stopped working for many people. What the hell? How does a patch screw up things? You know, I'm starting to think this is done intentionally. And you may be thinking, well, duh. Dr. Feelgood, of course. No, I mean in terms of what they do with smartphones now. Even five-year-old smartphones can do the same shit that we're doing on the new galaxies and shit today. The issue is they do things to these phones that make them inoperable over time. So one day your Netflix app will just stop working on your phone. There's no reason for it. Your phone's not outdated. The specs can run it. But they just find a way to make it where it stops working. They stop supporting the old app version for some reason. So at that point, you're forced to upgrade. But yeah, I'm, I just don't understand why people are accepting this. You know what else is unacceptable? Outside of broken games, incomplete games, day one DLC, day one patches, microtransactions. <sighs> Mid term console upgrades oh yeah ps4 pro for those of you that own a ps4 if you ran out and bought a ps4 pro i really do want to slap the shit out of you i do i want to slap you with a laser printer I mean, I, I don't know, just something big and just completely unrealistic. You have fallen for the well, what I believe is the biggest scam of all time and completely unacceptable. You have done, let them do to you what they've already done to you in the 7th gen and even before that. The same way Capcom will release a Street Fighter 2 game and then release an upgraded version of it called Super Street Fighter 2 and then Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo the same way that we got Call of Duty Modern Warfare and then World at War and then Modern Warfare 2 just giving you incremental upgrades you have now let them perform this shit on you hardware wise you really have you have let them turn gaming consoles into smartphones where the upgrades are minute if any at all if at all and 
you went ahead and bought a brand new console that plays the exact same games as your past console and I want to hear that excuse well it's better for VR okay that's fine but has anyone said that the current PS4 can that does not support VR I don't think anyone has said that I don't think at any point Sony said VR requires a PlayStation 4 Pro okay some say, well, I get to play my current PS4 games in 4K. It's not native. And that goes for FIFA 17, too. It's not native 4K. They can say all they want. The PS4 Pro runs the game in, 4, in 4K natively. That means it's outputting in 4K. But the original content itself, FIFA was not developed in, with 4K asset or content. It was not. You can't take a you can't take a four by six picture and stretch it to an eleven by fourteen and then claim it's native eleven by fourteen. No, it was originally a four by six. No one added the additional pixels or the assets or content when making this game to make it four K. It's upscaled, whether you like it or not. Say what you want. You can reply how you want. Thumbs down the video. You're talking to someone that doesn't care, and I won't even respond to you but i know facts and it's a very simple fact to understand but back to my point shit is unacceptable and i know some of you may be thinking well hey you got an xbox one s well in my opinion the s was uh, a decent leap from the typical xbox one besides being a lot smaller and having an internal power supply it runs a lot quieter a lot cooler and guess what it supports 4k streaming and 4k blu-rays now i don't give a shit about 4k i did not buy the system for that but the same system people pay 500 bucks for at launch and even last year we're paying about 400 dollars after the immediate price markdown guess what i got that console and more for 300 dollars. so i got twice the amount of storage space I got a, a couple of free games with it a sleeker design and it supports more features such as 4k streaming and 4k blu-ray playback in case I did want to take advantage of it for a cheaper price than what people pay for the original at launch so to me I won that battle not to mention all the games that I wanted for the Xbox One around or short after launch. I got those games for 10 to 15 bucks a piece. Brand new. With, the, with all the DLC. So I'm good. But anyway. As I was saying, back on point. All this shit is unacceptable, people. And we need to start <laughs> realizing this now. And trust me, if you stop buying call of duty every year if you stop buying battlefield if you choose not to upgrade your current ps4 if you choose not to continue purchasing psn and shit like that a change will come and it will come in your favor but it starts with you the more you continue to accept things, the more they will continue to do it. That's why we still get Call of Duty every year. That's why we still get Battlefield to some extent every year. That's why we're still getting a whole bunch of first-person shooters throughout the year. Because you guys continue to accept the bullshit. Remember when EA tried the whole online pass thing? That you had to buy a game brand new to, in order, you know, to play... To take advantage of the online features because they would include an online passcode. Even online fighters like Tekken Tag Tournament 2 had this. That shit didn't last long. You know why? Because people bitched about that. People, a lot of people purchase used games. And you mean to tell me I bought Tekken Tag Tournament 2, which is a fighting game, best played online, and I need to spend 10 bucks on an online code? No. I already spent 50 bucks on a used game. So I got to spend the price of a brand new game just to be able to play online. That's bullshit. People didn't accept that. And that's why it only lasts for like a year. If that. That shit is no longer done. Not to my knowledge. But 
anyway, that's all I have to say about it. Like, ser- take some serious time and put some serious thought into this. Anyway, this is Dr. Feelgood signing off. Let me know what you think. And as I always say, keep it gaming. You stupid bastards. <laughs>